So let's try to solve this circuit. Calculate the value of the current in each branch and its phase relative to the supply voltage. Now considering the circuit, we have a 200 volt AC supply. We have four passive elements, two resistors, one inductor and also one capacitor all connected in this circuit. And we are supposed to find the value of current flowing through each of the branches A, B and C. So how do we approach this question? Now the first thing we need to do is to find the total impedance of this circuit so that we can divide the value of the supply voltage by the total impedance to find the value of the total current produced by this voltage source. And then we can distribute the current in the various branches. So let's do that together. Now we have impedances in each of the branches. In branch A, we have a 20 ohm resistor. In branch B, we have a 0.1 Henry inductor and also a 5 ohms resistor. And then in branch C, we have a 150 microfarad capacitor. So let's find the impedances of each of the branches and then we can add them up to get the total impedance of this circuit. So even before that, the impedance Z is given by R plus JX, where R is the resistance and then X is the reactance. Now this can be the capacitive reactance or better still, the inductive reactance. Now let's move on as we find the impedance in branch A. Now the impedance in branch A is solely due to a resistor. So that's going to be 20 plus J0. And then converting this to the polar form, you have 20 polar 0. So this is the value of impedance in branch A. Now let's move on to branch B. Now for branch B, we have a resistor and an inductor. Therefore, it is very important for us to find the inductive reactance. Now the inductive reactance, that is XL, is given by 2 pi FL and that is equal to 2 pi times F. We have F to be 50, so times 50 and then we have L to be 0 0.1, so times 0 0.1. And that is equal to 31.42 ohms. Therefore, we have the impedance in branch B to be equal to the value of the resistance, which is 5, plus the inductive reactance, which is 31.42. Also, converting this value to the polar form, that's going to be 31.815 polar 80.958. Now let's move on to find out the impedance in branch C. In branch C, we have a 150 microfarad capacitor. Therefore, we need to find the capacitive reactance. So that is given by Xc equals 1 over 2 pi Fc. And then we have F to be 50. And also the value for the capacitance to be 150 microfarad, which means that 150 times 10 exponents negative 6. And this also gives... 21.22 ohms. Now since the reactance is capacitive, then it means that the impedance in branch C is equal to negative J 21.22 ohms. So these are the values of the various impedances 
in the branches that we have in the circuit. Now let's combine these values to get the total impedance for this circuit. So looking at the circuit, you realize that the impedance in branch B is in parallel with the impedance in branch A and the combination is in series with the impedance in branch C. Therefore, to find the total impedance that is given by ZT and is equal to ZA parallel ZB all in series with ZC. So for ZA parallel ZB, that's going to be ZA times ZB divided by ZA plus ZB. Now let's substitute the values of ZA and then ZB. So using the values in the polar forms, we have ZA to be 20 polar 0 times ZB, which is 31. 0.815 polar 80.958 all divided by 20 polar 0 plus 31.815 polar 80.958 So when you punch this on your calculator, you are going to get 15.847 polar 29.467. So this is going to be the total impedance as a result of combining impedance in branch A and impedance in branch B. So the total impedance that is ZT will be equal to the sum of this value and that of impedance in branch C. So that's going to be 15.847 polar 29.467 plus impedance in branch C so for the impedance in branch C, we did not convert to the polar form. So in the polar form, we are going to have 21.22 polar negative 90. So this is the impedance in branch C in the polar form. So let's add that here. So we have plus 21.22 polar negative 90. And then when you add these two values, you are going to get 19.25 polar negative 44.216. So this is the total impedance of the circuit. Now let's find the total current produced by this voltage source. So that is given by I equals, or better still, IT equals V divided by ZT. Now the value of the voltage in polar form is going to be 200 polar 0 and then divided by 19.25 polar negative 44. 0.216 so 200 divided by 19.25 gives 10.39 and then 0 minus this value basically gives the positive of this value so we have 44.216 so this is the value of the total current produced by the voltage source So we have the current in this branch, that is branch C, to be the total current flowing through the circuit. Therefore, the current in branch C is equal to the current produced by 
this voltage source that is the total current flowing in the circuit. Now let's move on to find the value of current flowing through branch A and branch B. Again, considering this circuit, you realize that we have these two impedances in parallel. Now let's try to combine them. So we have this to be ZC and then we are going to combine ZA and then ZB. So this is ZAB and then we have current IT flowing through each of the impedances. Now because these two impedances are connected in series, we have the same value of current flowing through them. Therefore, the voltage across each of them is basically the current IT times the impedance. So the voltage across ZC will be VC which is IT times ZC and also the voltage across AB is also the value of current IT times the impedance ZAB. So to find the value of the voltage across ZAB that is giving us VAB equals IT times ZAB. So we have IT to be 10.39 polar 44.216 times the value of ZAB. This is the value of ZAB 15.847 polar 29.467. Therefore, we have the value of VAB after multiplying these two values to be equal to 164.65 polar 73.68 so this is the value of the voltage across this impedance that is ZAB so to find the value of current flowing through each of the branches because these two impedances are connected in parallel we have the same voltage across each of them that is VAB so to find the current flowing through each of the branches we basically divide the voltage by the impedance of that particular branch so let's do that together so we had the voltage across AB to be equal to 164 Point six five polar seventy three point six eight, and then we have the impedance ZA to be equal to twenty polar zero, and then that of branch B also to be equal to thirty one point eight one five polar. 80.958 so the current in branch A is giving us VAB divided by ZA and that is equal to 164.65 polar 73.68 divided by 20 polar 0 and that is equal to now 164.65 divided by 20 is equal to 8.23 and then 73.68 minus 0 is still 73.68 so this is the value of current flowing through branch A also for branch B, we have IB equals VAB divided by ZB. So that is also equal to 
164.65 polar 73.68 divided by 31.815 polar 80.958 164.65 divided by 31.815 is equal to 5.18 and then 73.68 minus 80.958 is equal to negative 7.28 Now also for the current in branch C, which happens to be the total current flowing in the circuit, we had that to be equal to 10.39 polar 44.216. So that is 10.39 polar 44.216. So we have the current flowing through each of the branches A, B, C. Now from the question, after finding the values of the current in each branch, we are asked to determine its phase relative to the supply voltage. Now we have the supply voltage V to be equal to 200 polar zero. So comparing each of the current values with the voltage in branch A, you realize that the phase angle of the current is 73.68 and it happens to be a positive value. Therefore, the current IA leaves the supply voltage by 73. 0.68 degrees also in branch B the phase angle of the current is negative 7.28 now because we have a negative value it means that the current in branch B lags the supply voltage by 7.28 to 8 degrees and also in branch C since we have a positive value for the phase angle then it means that the current in branch C leaves the supply voltage by 44.216 degrees